Hey, how are we doing today? I am David Long, and we have a very serious topic to talk about today. A couple days ago, I got on YouTube and I was checking my analytics, and I was seeing that like 80% of my viewers are men, especially between the ages of 25 and 35. And I was thinking to myself, more than half of my actual friends in life that I hang out with are females. I wonder why it's so off balance in the other direction online. So I made a post about it on Facebook and I asked my female friends how I could better engage them and include them in my content. And I got some great suggestions. Some ladies suggested that I include more female philosophical voices, and I think that's a great suggestion. Immediately I thought of this really good episode from the Partially Examined Life podcast that includes the work of Carol Gilligan and her book in a different voice, which has to do with the way that females approach morality versus the way that males approach morality. A very interesting subject. I sat down to write this essay to make sense to myself of why it was so hard for women to say what they felt or thought and be heard without having it distorted and come back to them in some way that just didn't even sound like what they were trying to say. Women used to be seen as unintelligent because we were said to be emotional. You know, men were rational and women were emotional. Well, you know, honestly, if you think about it, that's ridiculous because men have feelings and women think, you know. <laughs> but, so now we have this phrase, emotional intelligence, and it's a big vaunted phrase because it's, a, you know, corporations are supposed to incorporate it. And people forget that where that came from was this work, questioning this division between emotional women and intelligent humans and saying, when you join these qualities, which had been seen as women's qualities with human qualities, those are all human qualities. So we have emotional intelligence and relational self and most recently the feeling brain. As well as this feminist novel called Herland, which explores the idea of an all-female society and what that might be like. I'll put a link to that talk down in the description. But what I was really moved by was women asking me to teach men to respect women. Right now is both a very troubling time and a very exciting time. In one sense it's troubling because we're hearing all of these stories about women coming forward about abuse that they've suffered. But it's also exciting because it's a sort of snowball effect that's been happening and more and more women are able to be heard and respected. And so I think this is a sign that our culture is changing. I think I probably in general have a pretty mature male audience. So I wanna lead by example. I wanna step up and say that I'm an ally for women that I will stand up for women. I think right now is a good time, not just for women to step forward, but for men to step forward as well, and to say, mature men respect women. Mature men act with integrity. Also, fellas, I think it's important that we let women know that we have their back. If we hear something or we see something, that we're gonna stand up for them. It's never okay, it's never cool to treat women as if they're just an object. It's not okay, we don't respect it, we will not stand for it. We are gonna let other men know that it's not cool if we hear them talking about women like objects. Fellas, not only should women be treated with respect because they're our sisters and they're our mothers, but because they're people. You wouldn't like to be treated like an object and exploited. You wouldn't like to be treated like a lesser than. You wouldn't like to have to walk around in the world afraid, no. What kind of world do we want to live in? I, for one, want to live in a world where we can all feel comfortable and we can all respect each other, where we can all strive to do our best, where we can bring as many perspectives and voices to the table as possible. This is really important. Fellas, ladies, I want you to know that I can see that there's a line being drawn in the sand and I'm on the side of ladies. I respect women. I want to be their ally. I want to step up and really take responsibility and show you that I care. So I'm not just going to do this one vlog about it. In the future, I want to have talks about porn. I want to make a future episode that goes more in depth, not just respect women, but actually give practical examples about how to have skillful communication with a woman, how to respectfully pursue a relationship with a woman, and even how to deal with rejection if that happens as well. And of course, I'll try to do some other videos about female thinkers. Definitely, I'm open to input. If you have some ideas, definitely let me know down below. I definitely want to let ladies know that I'm making videos for you too, that I want you to feel included, I want you to feel like you're a part of this conversation too. 
So I want to talk real quick a little bit about philosophy and hip-hop. As a rapper, as a philosopher, not only are these generally male-dominated fields, but there's also some pathology in there too. For example, there's a really good documentary I would like to suggest called Hip Hop Beyond Beats and Rhymes. You're like in this box. In order to be in that box, you have to be strong, you have to be tough, you have to have a lot of girls, you gotta have money, you gotta be a player or a pimp. You know, you gotta be in control, you have to dominate other men, other people. You know, if you're not any of those things, then, you know, people call you soft or weak. And nobody wants to be any of those things. So everybody stays inside the box. Before hip-hop, men were seeming in R&B, they was like very docile. You know what I mean? But when hip hop came around, it brought masculinity back into the game. Now, some of it is a little misguided. One second we're killing each other, the next minute we're pimping hoes. We're doing everything wrong. That's bananas. Through rap music, I think there's an identification with some of the most stereotypical masculine standards. If you're one of my male fans who likes rap and hip hop, I would highly suggest that you check out this video. It talks about psychology and a lot of the problems with hypermasculinity in the hip hop community, sexism, homophobia, these types of issues, and it's definitely worth the watch. Real quick, I want to let you know that I'm not opposed to necessarily saying curse words in general. Some things you might hear in rap that you will never hear in any of my rap are homophobic slurs, any kind of words that would be disrespectful to women. Actually, ladies, you'll find that a lot of my lyrics are even about the opposite of that. It's about nature worship and appreciating the sacred feminine. And when it comes to philosophy, I actually prefer to conversate with the ladies. Generally, guys can be very set in their ways. It becomes like very competitive and very egoic, whereas I find with ladies, it's a lot more about sharing and collaborating. At the end of a philosophy session with a lady, I will generally feel uplifted, more inspired, and more connected with her personally. We're just finishing up a wonderful philosophy group. This is like the highlight of my week, spending time with, with these people. Whereas oftentimes, when I talk about philosophy, with a man, I might leave feeling frustrated, unheard, and like we didn't really resonate. A lot of guys can be very set in their ways, whereas I find that a lot of ladies are more open, more interested in the views of others. This goes back to what I was saying about Carol Gilligan and a different voice. I actually host a local philosophy group, and the majority of the people who come to it are females. So in general, I actually think ladies can be much better at philosophy than guys are. They listen better, they learn quicker, and it's more of a communal shared experience. Fellas, there is a whole lot to be learned from including more female perspectives in whatever group you're in. Ladies can be really great at collaborating and sharing and listening well. We would be wise to respect feminine wisdom much more. All right, I'm gonna leave it right there for now, but ladies, definitely know that I'm gonna be talking about more subjects that interest you in the future. I really do care about including you. I care about your input. You can put it down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I can do better. Let me know what you like that I'm already doing. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your feedback. Fellas, I would invite you to do what I'm doing. Use whatever platform you have to make some kind of a public statement, letting other guys and ladies know that you're their ally, that you are not gonna just stand by, that you have ladies' backs, and you wanna see a world with mutual respect and equal collaboration. All right, stick around for some I'm gonna teach you how to make a delicious vegan risotto. These are the ingredients to a delicious vegan risotto. Mostly just gonna be using this one pan. So, unless you're making your own vegetable broth, in which case you would also need a, another pot. But I'm just using this vegetable broth right here and that should be fine. The real trick to risotto is that you have to keep on stirring it and folding it. This is like, unlike a lot of other rice dishes. You don't just like set it and forget it. You really have to stay on top of it. You can't be wandering away and stuff. 
So we're starting with some of our regular bits. Just starting out with some onions and garlic. So if I had some fresh thyme and rosemary all smashed up and nice, I'd be throwing that in there right about now too. Unfortunately, sometimes you gotta work with what you got. Or maybe you might say, fortunately, sometimes you're able to work with what you've got. I'm just gonna use some of this Mrs. Dash. A dash of dash. This type of rice in particular is risotto rice. You have to get a special rice to do risotto. Don't think you're just gonna be using some jasmine and throwing it in here and using this technique and making risotto. You gotta get this kind of rice. Arborio. Only gonna use one cup. I even heaped it a little bit. And the reason why I'm gonna go ahead and make a little bit extra is because if I do have leftover risotto at the end, you can make delicious deep fried risotto balls or something. If you can manage to have leftovers. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a bay leaf or two. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add this cup of rice straight into the pan with the onions and garlic. And then the first hit that I'm gonna give it is gonna be some white wine. And that smells really good. It smells like the beginning of some delicious risotto. So what you want to do when you cook this is you just want to be constantly folding the rice over on, on itself. You want to be encouraging it to suck up more and more of that broth. Basically, you're just kind of constantly folding it. You do this for about 30-ish minutes, so it's a bit of a process. Basically, you're going to use about two-thirds of this thing. Maybe, maybe a little more. Like I said, you gotta stay on it. You gotta be folding it and folding it. You want this over medium heat. We don't want it to be too hot, we want it to be nice. And I just decided I'm not just gonna do just mushroom and asparagus. I'm also gonna throw some more of this delicious garden fake chicken in there. Because this stuff is the bomb. I'm gonna fry it up in a separate pan next to it. And when the time is right, I'm gonna throw it in. Like I said, you gotta stay folding it. All right, still stir it. Mix it in lots of things. And work in these delicious asparagus, especially the heads and the top bits. When you're making risotto, you want to really make sure that all your bits are really small because what you really kind of want is to be able to get that perfect bite where you get little elements of everything in each bite. Make sure you put salt, stirring and stirring, stirring and stirring. Remember, you don't want to add too much broth at once. It's supposed to be like a cup at a time. You don't want to flood it out. You want to slowly cook it in. I don't know if I'm supposed to or not but I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna add a squirt of lemon. So at this point, I'm getting pretty close to the end. That piece is a little bit too big. I'm trying to cut them all real, 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 real thin, so they kind of almost like, they're there, but they're not there. That one's a little quality control, you know? So the next thing that I'm gonna do is to put some more nutritional yeast in there. That'll give it kind of the creamy, more cheesy kind of flavor, and it also gives you kind of more of that umami kind of taste, as well as it's gonna suck up some of the last of this broth. Purple. Okay, that's very, that's very close. Now it's starting to get to, a, to that point where it's starting to get a good consistency. You want it to be creamy, but you don't want it to be watery. So when you get close to the end like this, just keep cooking it down until it's done. I think it'd be really great to serve this with some bread, some pieces of toast, and then you kind of scoop it onto the pieces of, of cut up toast, little slices of, of bread, right? And you put it on there and you eat it like that. And that is about the most decadent thing on the planet. So good. Unfortunately though, right now I don't have bread like that. So I'm just gonna eat it as it is with some hot sauce. I'll put hot sauce on the bread too though. Really I think a lot of the art of cooking happens around this time at the end where I start tasting it more and being more interested in kind of the last minute refinements of flavor. When you've been making a dish long enough, you know the elements that it's supposed to have and you can kind of just add all those in. But it's always good to kind of go back and taste it, check it just to make sure it's good. Maybe add a little bit more salt, if that's what you feel. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more lemon. If that's what I feel. I really like the creaminess that we're, that we're getting to here, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more Mama Nooch to suck up the last little bits of, of juice. We have a plastic thing, don't leave it in there. You're just gonna be cooking the plastic. That's dumb, I'm not the best or perfect at any of this. I'm just a dude doing my best and showing you what I do. So don't, don't ever think I'm an expert. One great thing to do is go online and look up a bunch of different recipes and kind of figure out how you can put the different elements together to make the recipe how you want it to be. And experiment with it, practice over time and refine it and make it better. Before you know it, you'll have 
a dish that you really love. Cooking is something I think everybody should do. Let me ask you this, you eat every day, right? Every day you eat, then you should know how to cook. It's part of being a human, it's part of life, and it's actually pretty good and enjoyable. So I would definitely encourage you to think of it as a fun art project that you get to enjoy and eat. And make yourself some food, don't be afraid, be adventurous, go online, try to figure out what you want. If you go to a restaurant and you find some dish that you really, really like there, go home and try to make it for yourself. You can do it. I've done it. There's a bunch of recipes online. It's very, very easy. All right, delicious vegan risotto is served. Mm -hmm. You like that? She's happy with it, I'm happy with it. Hey, thanks for watching. Before we go, I want to big up Josh Simon, he's my newest Patreon. And I made a couple changes to my Patreon account. Now if you want to support but you don't have a lot of money, you can pledge one or even two dollars a month. So if you can afford one or two bucks a month, click the Patreon and support. I majorly appreciate it. The more support I get, the more content I'll be able to make. All right, check out some of those links down in the description. There's some good links in there this week. Also like, subscribe, share with your friends. I really hope to see more lady subscribers. And also check out last week's vlog about Purple Tribe. Peace.